Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Yeah, a very a warm welcome to Rüdiger Albers uh, from Vienna. It's 9.30 p.m. here in Vienna and 3.30 p.m. in New York. Rüdiger, how are you? Alexander, good to see you. You know, it's hard to believe it's Friday. Um, I found that out yesterday. Uh, it was actually, I, I could have sworn it was be Wednesday. So somehow with all that's going on, you totally lose track of time. And that's, that's that, us who are in the business of time. Hard to believe, but it's true. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, everybody, everybody uh, mm -hmm. in your team is is healthy and in good shape. So everything is okay so far. Thank God for that. Uh, yesterday we had a uh, a very nice um, webex call with everybody uh, with the two teams. You know, as you know, we have two stores on Fifth Avenue, the Rolex Boutique, and then the Wembley Flagship Store on Fifty uh, Fifth Street. And uh, we, um, we all got together. It was nice to see everybody. Some had a beard. Some tried to have one. Um, and, uh, you know, it was good to see everybody in good spirits so far. Thank God nobody has been infected. Um, but I know it's not easy. You know, some of them are quarantined by themselves, you know. And after a while, that, you know, how often can you reorganize your closet? Um, you know, and you may run out of books. So thank God that's online. Um, And, and others have to homeschool their children, the whole other challenge. And, you know, deal with your husband all day long. I personally now have a, a CEO in my house. You know, normally Kim Weber, she lives in Germany. She comes once a year, calls me once in the moon and a blue moon. And uh, here's my wife. I have to give hourly reports while I'm still on the phone, <laughs> while I'm still <laughs> on, um, on the computer. And it's like, yeah, yes, no, that is business. You know, that's like I'm not sitting around here. I, I, uh, I just, I just have to add for those watching now, because of course I know you for such a long time. For those who don't have recognized you yet, uh, the yeah. institution, Mr. Rüdiger Ibers is, uh, of course, president of Vampe United States of America, USA, with two stores, as you just mentioned, on uh, on Fifth Avenue, the Rolex Boutique, and uh, in the Peninsula Building. Um, you have the uh, the watch, the big watch uh, store with uh, how many brands uh, you have? Uh, About 20, 22. Yeah, 22 brands. And yeah. jewelry, lots of beautiful jewelry. You know, and clocks uh, and watch binders and safes. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, Vamp, Vamp will celebrate its 40th anniversary, if I have uh, been calculating correctly. And uh, just before we started, you told me you are there for 33 years. Yes, I started in Hamburg in uh, 1987 as a watchmaker. Um, my father was a watchmaker, so I followed his footsteps and then had decided that I wanted to have a little bit more adventure and uh, uh, applied for a position in, in New York. Got it. was lucky enough that uh, I was able to assume the position of um, general manager within like three years. And um, yeah, the rest is history. At the time, we were like really uh, the last um, on the totem pole uh, at Webby uh, in terms of performance. By now, we are the strongest performer. Um, so it was like a puzzle and mosaic that we put together, a great group of people there. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're having a whole new challenge. I mean, I've seen a lot happening in the city. As you know, the city, when something happens, it's always in New York. Um, but this one obviously is uh, turning out to be rather disconcerting. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing my uh, my Abercrombie. I saw. Outfit. I saw. Yeah, I, I'm proud because I bought it when Abercrombie opened the store years ago, and you had to still line up to get it, uh, to get that uh, that outfit. And I thought for you, I will put on my sh my t-shirt, my, yeah, my polo shirt. <laughs> very nice. Uh, that's like just two. Um, uh, a block away from my section. So. Yeah, I know. No. Uh, Rudiger, let me ask you, or Rudy, uh, let me ask you, people um, coming in uh, or from my community do ask a lot of questions. Uh, now, of course, they are concerned about what, how, how the industry and how deliveries and everything will, will follow up this year. Um, did you get so far any information uh, coming from the industry when deliveries will arrive uh, um, and so on? Uh, and one of the biggest questions people want to know is they are probably uh, waiting for one of those uh, watches like uh, Patek Philippe or Rolex. You both have them in your store. 
is there now a chance for someone to get such a watch quicker? Are there any changes yet? Do you see, uh, let's see, a, a possibility for someone to to accelerate uh, his position on the waiting list? Okay. Well, you know what the um, the answer to that is that uh, the game has changed in a way that, uh, to an extent that we don't know yet. You know, obviously those watches are always coveted and will probably continue to be coveted. Those, we have like lists of people that are interested that is like endless, you know, so we could live on that for years, but we don't get enough product in the first place. It could well be that we call people and they say, you know what, at this point, uh, you know, I've just been furloughed. Um, I rather do this some other time, you know, so that it could well happen. Does that mean that you will be next in line for 5711? Probably not. You know, there's so few that come in that's uh, a, a whole other chapter. But uh, I could see that uh, the the waiting for on, on some of the desired Rolex uh, sports watches will uh, become shorter because I think a lot of speculators will possibly leave the market because there's not necessarily a premium to be gotten for it. So it's down to the people that really love the watches for all the right reasons. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, um, I think that that will probably happen to some degree, not to an extent that they're like all over the window and being sold at, uh, below retail or anything like that. I, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Um, but it should get easier. Yes. Okay. And concerning deliveries, uh, do you have any idea when, uh, watches, uh, new models, uh, that have been presented already at the beginning of the year will arrive? Uh, do you get any information? Yeah, no, um, that's the big question mark. You know, there were plans to have individual, uh, gatherings where the watches will be introduced. Um, mm -hmm. but obviously that had to be shelved and now it remains to be seen. It's also the question, does it make sense in this environment to, you know, do, to, to launch something new that nobody can get their hands on. You know, can't even mm -hmm. see it, physically feel it. Um, so the, I, it's, the James Bond movie has been postponed for good reasons. I mean, you use all the excitement, all the marketing for it, and then nobody goes. And then you talk about it again in the fall. It was like, didn't we have this already? So it's probably prudent to put that off for a happier time. And then okay. in the meantime... Chances are they're producing some great winners. They can ramp up production. So when they do come out, we can actually make a lot of our customers happy. Because that is always a challenge. And I think not every customer truly understands of how challenging it is. You know, Because the numbers that we get, even us on Fifth Avenue, one of the biggest retailers in the country, um, the numbers that we get is not enough to make our most loyal, long-time customers happy. Because how do we deny them to be first in line? Um, and you have to sort of try to appease everybody. It is not, not possible. You get a handful of something, that's not enough. So, but I, I think a lot of people think it's like, oh, it's a okay, game when you have like 20 of them in the basement. Um, not the case. Okay. How important uh, was uh, business to tourists uh, for you? Was this important? <laughs> Well, as you have seen yourself, probably, you know, we had um, a huge um, influx of Chinese customers starting 2010, probably for several years to an extent where you just couldn't properly service customers anymore because uh, it was just so crowded. Um, that has weaned off for various reasons over time. And uh, last year, almost 99% of our business was um, a U.S. business. So the tourists are no longer as important of a fact. We obviously enjoy having them, and we wish that they could come back. Um, but that um, it will probably be a while. I know that you guys in Austria are not allowed to travel till July 1st, and that has been changed. So possibly that happens to other countries too. Uh, so the normalization will probably be a while out there. Yeah, we are we are supposed to travel, uh, not to travel. I think, uh, as you said, until the beginning of July. That's the latest information we have, and it's the same situation here. Austria is very much a tourist country, and I think we are not seeing any tourists at all this year because uh, I don't uh, see them coming back uh, before next year. But we will we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah, we, we have a store in Vienna. We have what? Well, we have thirty-five stores. The Webby is still a family-owned business. And uh, we, uh, we do have a store in Vienna, and that's close, just like our store in London, in Paris, Vienna, Madrid. 
and uh, we have one on a cruise ship that also has been grounded. So currently, all um, all doors is are closed. There, is there one Aventis store actually open? Uh, we do have an online store in Germany that's operational, so we do business yeah. that way. Uh, the challenging time is uh, challenging part of it is that much of the product is in the individual stores, which we're currently not necessarily able to open in order to get to uh, the merchandise for various reasons. This would be this would have been a next question if someone says, "Okay, I I I, I need now to do something good to me. Oh. I want to buy a watch. I think uh, yeah. FedEx and Co are up, uh, are still uh, working and uh, are still busy." But in fact, you could take the money, but you couldn't deliver the watch because you have no access to uh, to the store in the Fifth Avenue because you're told not to go there to keep unessential businesses closed. Correct, hundred percent at home, says the governor. And quite frankly, I would just feel I could not forgive myself if I asked. Obviously, I can't go in the store by myself, you know, technically and physically, and then for security and insurance reasons and so forth. Um, I couldn't even open it. So, but the idea of Asking one of my colleagues or a few of them to join me at this point when we are two weeks before the apex and God forbid something happens to them. I mean, they might be perfectly healthy, but for some unforeseen complication or you're the unlucky one that, you know, uh, has complications and you can't get the proper care uh, over a watch sale. You know, we do have customers that ask us, like, can you ship me this and can I get that? And why can't you? And I have a service issue. Um, and I think I just ask everybody to understand that currently it's just not worth it. I think uh, we need to. Uh, let, let, let's assume uh, times are uh, getting better. You can reopen. Yes. Every business is brought back alive. Yes. Um, someone is watching the video now and says, oh, wow, that's cool. Uh, Vamp in New York. I always wanted to shop there. Uh, that guy here in the screen, oh, he, he, he's, he, he's, he's funny. He's, he's a guy I would buy a watch from. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Thank you. You are, you, you, uh, you are able to ship uh, all over the place in the United States. That's correct. Absolutely. I mean, FedEx is still working. So if once that's lifted and we can uh, safely go into the store, even if we, let's say, not open right away for the public, uh, we could certainly process orders. Uh, we have product that uh you know is desirable um so we will certainly reach out to our clients and there's probably lots of more requests but by all means have them email you directly or send it to me at uh, rudiger alvarez at webby.com and uh we'd be happy to oblige we like to nurture our relationships and grow them and you and i we go back a very long time you know that we offer quality product quality service we have probably the best service department in the country with uh, four master watchmakers on the premises. We have the Patek Philippe uh, Official Authorized Service Center, which we, you, you know, my watchmaker went to Switzerland several times for weeks of, on end, uh, seven weeks in total to get the certification. So you can see the caliber of um, the, the, the service personnel that we have. Mm -hmm. So we offer a lot of peace of mind. Um, let me ask you something else. Uh, what would you these days uh, consider, let's say, someone uh, young uh, with a certain uh, income? What would be watches or brands these days you would recommend to buy or to have a closer look at? I'm often asked this question and I always try uh, yeah, to, to give an advice, but the advice always comes from me. Now I have an expert sitting just uh, right. opposite of me yeah. and what let me let's talk about some of, of ideas you have uh, what brands would be interesting and uh, which brands you would probably consider you have more than 20 in the store so i think there is a choice absolutely absolutely and it's obviously a very personal uh decision i think you have to look at sort of what you have already and maybe where there's areas that you'd like to um add something to it you're good in the sports segment you have a watch with a steel bracelet and or gold bracelet for that matter uh you like something elegant and flat maybe you look at a vacheron constantine patrimony timeless elegant um or you should maybe look at the iconic reversal because that i think belongs in every collector's um uh assortment you know i personally have the duo time so for a lot of travel it's great plus you get one side in one color and the other the other is almost buy one get one free phenomenal product 
uh, fantastic quality, great company. So I think Jaeger, they break the great uh, product offering. Um, Girard Pego is new in our assortment. And I have to say the watch, especially the Laureato, uh, very appealing, a really a uh, good looking product uh, with an integrated bracelet. I happen to have the strap version, stunning uh, 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 color contrast. So, and I think you know, take a look at Panerai because that's probably something that a lot of people don't have. And here's a company that is making great watches for over 20 years with a black dial for the most part. I mean, they just added some silver dial last year and they have a couple of white ones, but for them, they keep uh, relevant with a black dial, which in itself is a challenge. Uh, but they have some, some great products, some new sizes, the dual. You know, I gave my wife the, um, the rose gold version with a red strap, a cherry red strap, very sexy looking. So let's not forget the missus in the household because she is the CEO. You know, <laughs> I'm actually find myself now having a CEO in the house. You know, Kim Weber lives in Hamburg. She comes to see me once a year. She, uh, she calls me, I don't know, once in a blue moon. And uh, for my wife, I have to give her the hourly reports. Why I'm on the phone, why I'm on the computer. You know, is it all business? Yes, it is. I, I hear you. I hear so, very different. What, uh, what about someone dreaming about a Rolex? Is there any uh, current model uh, available when a client walks into the store so he could say, okay, this is probably a model I can take home and not only dream of? Or is it simply I, possible? Yeah. No, they, they have been uh, delivering, and they told me that they're ready to deliver. So the moment that this whole, uh, they have the watches ready to ship, basically. They're waiting for the go for us to be able to receive and for them to be able to process. Um, mm -hmm. As you heard, the Rolex uh, uh, manufacturer in Switzerland had to close. Um, and, you know, that... Two, two, not, two weeks. Right. And plus that, that two weeks, we're probably only going to maybe, maybe if not, you know, feel it next year because everything has been pre-planned and the watch that you received today has not made yet has not been made yesterday obviously it takes a lo long time to make a Rolex properly so this this two week closure will not impact us immediately but it it, it is not uh, it is not ranked among wishes and dreams to walk into a Rolex boutique and to really get out of it with a watch on your wrist it's possible <laughs> absolutely yes i mean it may not be the one that you want right away you might have to have a little bit of patience, but as we mentioned before earlier, uh, it could be conceivable that there are clients that at the moment have other priorities yeah. um, and, and postpone the purchase. The love for the watch is probably never going to go away, but you know you also have to be responsible and prudent and see if the Rolex is what do you need right now, or if you feel like I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to get it when when uh, everything else is paid. Of course, of course. Now, uh, questions come in and people are curious to know and uh, they are worried they have uh, uh, been uh, confirmed to get this and that watch uh, and they, they ask me, oh, will it be delivered or, or are they even able to deliver and who knows? It's, it's yeah. very difficult. I, this is, now I have someone who is really in the business. If people ask me, you know, it's always, I have to, I have to pick up some information. Now I have the chance because you're sitting up in front of me or opposite. So I'm, I'm asking you. Um, some uh, one other question is um, considering uh, considering the fact that uh, watches are are still so popular, popular and and uh, do you think, generally speaking, uh, will the the COVID crisis, will Corona really uh, be able to harm the industry seriously, or is it just a temporarily? A punch the, the industry gets, uh, it will recover quickly. What do you esteem for the for for end of the year next year? How quick is the recovery going to be? Well, I um, I think for this year we'll definitely feel uh, this punch in the gut um, because also, especially in America, you know, the stock market has uh, suffered suffered quite a few losses, uh, and it remains to be seen how that will end. But, uh, you know, especially uh, in the U.S., people are always optimistic and thriving. And uh, I remember after 9-11, which I experienced in New York, that I thought the world was coming to an end. I think I was, I couldn't even get out of bed for a few days. It was just such a, 
a horrifying event and I thought life was over. And there were people saying like, you'll see, this will all come back. And um, thank God it did. So, you know, the, the problem with this crisis is that you don't know how long it's going to take. You know? And uh, we hope that uh, obviously uh, something will soon improve and little by little we get the ball back rolling. But everybody understands that we have to go with uh, – what we've been dealt with at the moment. So, but I think, uh, but I, I, I personally think that, uh, especially the business, uh, uh, everybody will do everything possible that we get back on track quickly. This, oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I think like restaurants will. I mean, the ones that survive it through here will be super crowded. But people want to be with people, you know. And I think yeah. also for us as a retail store, you know, for well, the ones that are cooped up and only consume this uh, information digitally. If you have a passion for something, that will not die because of you being locked in your house. If anything, you can pursue that more because you got the time to spend on your screen. So that will definitely, you know, I think the moment it's, we get the clear, uh, people will come in. You know, we have close relationships with our customers. That's what we're known I, for. It's a family I business. My, my team has been there 20, 30, uh, 15 years. Um, so I, we are it's, it's, using it's even it's even for me kind of a, ha a safe haven or a place I always like to come back when I'm in New York and you know I'm pretty often there and it, yeah. it's, it's funny you get into you get you get into Fifth Avenue and they say hey, good evening or good afternoon Mr. Lin so hi Alexander and this is like yeah. coming home and this is very nice I know it's yeah you're, right? you're, part, you're part of the family but it's the same with customers it's, I'm always I mean we have so, so many customers reaching out to us. You know, I mean, I encourage my staff to reach out to everybody, but, uh, you know, you obviously miss some. Um, and many of them reach out to us and say, like, you know, how are you guys doing? You know, and everybody talks about New York. It's such a focus on it. And my, my, my school friends from back in Germany just told me that the, the New York mayor was on the front line of their newspaper, the front page. You know? So mm -hmm. New York, everybody has a love for New York. Everybody been to New York. It's a great place to be. And a lot of people go there for business or for fun. Yeah. You're one of the fans. That's why I love it here. I've never had a boring day in, in my uh, life here in New York, and it keeps on, you know, being challenged. And we'll pull through this. Yeah, We're very yeah. resilient. That's for sure. Last thing, um, you know, probably Patek and Rolex better than I do. Could you imagine that these two brands will not present any novelties this year? There are some first rumors out there. People have been uh, discussing this in the comment sections on YouTube uh, with, our, uh, with our channel. So could you imagine that uh, those two, they are the only one who could afford probably doing this. That Patek says, okay, no, no novelties this year, and Olex says, okay. I, I expect Olex to bring out the Explorer because it's the only watch day that's still in the old, in the old done in the old way, on the former way. So I expect Explorer, but I don't know. Can you imagine that they're doing this? Well, I mean, this is a year of everything being new, right? Who would have thought that this um, that all of a sudden, you know, Basel gets cancelled, uh, SIJH gets cancelled, or actually postponed, uh, Basel was postponed. Um, yeah, it, it, it could all happen. I mean, again, if you release product that nobody can get their hands on at a time when you know it's little little to celebrate you know not sure i yeah. think uh they are uh, probably looking at this very carefully um and make that decision when the time is right uh, to see if it makes sense or not i mean like even if you look at that the magazines are currently not many of them are not available uh so there's such a whole aspect missing of the product launch. It usually goes with a big fanfare. Um, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they at least for now hold off until we see the end of the tunnel. Okay. Which would be okay with me. Honestly, uh, if they, uh, instead of bringing novelties, deliver what uh, people are, uh, are anyhow waiting for, this would be fine for them, I think. And, all those who already have everything at Patek, at Rolex, and waiting for a novelty, they can still wait yeah. a while to get it, their new one. It gives them a chance also to produce more. So this way, when they do launch, they actually, their customers don't have to wait a year or longer to 
get the hands on it. You know, in the first go around, if we get four of something, you know, let's say Patek Philippe comes up with something new, and we're like, oh wow, I take fifteen of those, knowing that uh, maybe we get ten, and they tell me like, really, you're getting four. So what am I do with that? But that's yeah. the naked truth, because from the I don't know eighty five accounts in the country, uh, not all of them will even get one of them. You know, so it's hard for customers to really understand that it's not artificially rare. That's the the way that, that, that goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to understand uh, because people think uh, those watches can uh, be manufactured in any quantity, but they are not. Even if Rolex manufactures more than one million watches a year, they just yeah. are absorbed like buff, like nothing. And and that's it's a good topic that you bring up because a lot of people come into the stores like I know they're holding back I know they're playing games to manipulate the prices la 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 you know what I can show you that we received more Rolex watches in 2019 than in 2018 and so did everybody else that I know okay so the fact is that if they ramp up production it's a huge big, um, Colossus, if you so want, you know, so how do you add 5% or 10% on that? That's the annual production of another company that has itself big production facility. So it's, and there's a the human aspect. If you go to the Rolex factory and see how many human hands are in there, I was actually pleasantly surprised of how labor intense it was and how many eyes go on it, not just like with all the electronic gadgets and so on. There was real humans. In there, they are ramp they are ramping up production. They are ramping up production in Beal. You know, they bought land and they are trying to ramp up production and the movement, the movement section or the movement production for thirty percent to to finally kill that bottleneck that is yeah. there in the moment. It's the movement production, but still, if they ramp up for forty percent, this will still not satisfy the demand on the market. Uh, I I heard uh, numbers that the, the the entire demand worldwide for Rolex watches is about two million pieces. So if there are one million actually manufactured, they make yeah. a ramp up of thirty percent. We're still not at two millions. Uh, our stores in Germany, you know, like we had one that had like ten watches at the end of the year. One had eight. I mean, it was just like I've never seen anything like it. But it was because of demand, not of them not shipping. This I, whatever I, came was I, like I, I don't assume I don't assume that you don't want to sell watches. <laughs> you dare to that's sell. That's the thing. Them. Exactly. We we want to. We need to. You know. We have rent yeah, yeah. to pay. By the way, what are you wearing? Uh, today, uh, I have a uh, Bulgari. Oh, the Bulgari. Oh, the Octo. Yeah, the uh, Octo, the uh, super flat Bulgari. Oh, it's titanium, right? Yes, it's a titanium watch. It's, uh, you put it on your wrist and you don't feel it anymore. It's like, uh, it's like melting with your, your wrist. and yeah. All right, see, I couldn't decide, so I, I, I'm wearing two. I got the GMT. <laughs> The last of the Batmans, I couldn't resist. I bought the very last one, the Oyster Bracelet, but with a movement that doesn't have the same powers of as the new one, which is 70 hours on the new one. And then they, um, the Patek uh, we World Timer. See, we, oh, the World Timer. Okay, we couldn't see it first. Uh, this way, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. What, my, put, my pride and joy. Uh, try to uh, still be, Yeah, now we see it. Okay, there was uh, some reflections. No, yeah, perfect. Now we see it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, my pride and joy, love it. Uh, and this is the Bulgari. Yeah, yep, I tried it on. You see how thin it is. Is there movement in it? <laughs> You're kidding? Oh yeah, well, look at that. <laughs> there is a movement, an automatic movement. So the thinnest, the thinnest automatic movement uh, actually manufactured. Yeah, uh, uh, good. Uh, Rudy, it was a pleasure. As always, Same here, uh, to Alexander. Talk to you. Talk to you. Um, very refreshing. Uh, yeah, uh, seeing you smile, hearing what you have to tell, and I'm really desperately waiting to get back uh, to New York as soon as possible. I think it will be one of my first uh, trips I will make. Uh, uh, first, I will come to you and then probably pick you up and we'll go down uh, some, some blocks to Aldo uh, in yes, Bernadette. Let's do that. Uh, have a little vino. Yeah. So we, all know, at, uh, we all need it. We all need it. Aldo Zom, a wine bar, or probably at the Le Bernard, a nice lunch or something, and then maybe a good glass of champagne later. So Absolutely. I'm really, very much looking forward to this. Um, uh, Rudy, uh, stay safe and uh, yeah, be, uh, be safe, stay healthy, and uh, whatever. 
just take good care of you and your team and uh, yeah Will hope do. to see you hope to see you back uh, one and uh, life one to one very very soon maybe very soon so you know whenever any of your viewers have a question or are just in something you know, have them email you you can forward it to me and uh, we'll we'll do our best to make you our customer if you're not a customer yet i think you will hopefully visit us one day and, and see that the web is a special special place to be you know and also business. for servicing i always say servicing is nothing you should uh, try with someone you don't trust or you're not sure if he's able to really service your watch so if yeah. it comes to servicing a watch i think uh, as you just mentioned and told us before uh, you have trained watchmakers and uh, you really invested some money in a, in, a, in a service center and i think it's worth putting a watch there and not to someone I don't know, who, who claims to be able to you know what, I, I, as you know i'm a watchmaker myself so i mean and you i think you as well aren't you well you, no, you no, worked I'm in not. The, but you worked I'm you worked in the um in the retail environment before so you know all my my side of the business very well i did i did and yeah. um I always like to say, like, everybody can take a fine watch apart and put it back together. Every watchmaker can. But there's some very exacting standards. There's, like, a whole science to the lubrication. And a lot of people are not very respectful of the watch. So when you look at it afterwards, you know, there's scratches, there's fingerprints. You sort of deface the watch, um, uh, rushing through it and using the wrong lubrication. So in the long term, not a good thing. You might save a few dollars, but... You know, for something that you spend good money on yourself, I think the maintenance is part of it. And, you know, I always so compare it to you go put like $100 in your gas tank every week. Don't think about it. But if you have to spend $100 a year, you know, and maybe every five, eight years you do that on a watch, everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. How can this be so much? But um, it's not, uh, I think it's it's well worth the investment to give your watch some proper care and have it done by the professionals so you get a warranty get peace of mind and uh, you know we actually extend the warranty for an extra year so you know, we're happy, happy to assist you can FedEx us the watch we'll take care of it um, but you know we're, we're looking forward to being with our clients ideally face to face but you know we'll find other ways this will help us uh, you know find other ways to connect with people we're actually going to do our Instagram TV we're probably going to create something that's going to be called um, Wednesdays with Wempy or at Wempy we're still working on the details I just had like a, a nice little first uh, in interview um, with um, Instagram so we're, we're trying to find different ways to engage our customers come up with some interesting format and also sometimes take your mind of it because let's face it we all need a little diversion after all this that we're dealing with you know. and we just started our youtube uh our youtube chat so uh, i think yeah, we should we'll do, do this more yeah we, we should do, we should do this more often especially when the first uh, novelties and first new watches are out i think we are going to vividly discuss them uh here and uh, talk about them and what you think what i think and then we'll okay. give some advice give some advice to our viewers about those watches got it i'd be happy to all right my friend thank you stay healthy the same to you. And, think uh, positive, yeah. test negative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think okay. positive. I'm always positive. I always say the glass. I know, I know. That's why it's fun to call is, you. The glass is always half full and never half empty. Always. Yeah, cheers. A virtual cheers. Hey, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers. Bye-bye, <laughs> bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. I will, I will.